All right, fam, it's your brother Asad. And I'm Adrian. And we are back again with another quick video. So make sure you like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notifications bell so that you'll be notified when we drop new material on this channel. Secondly, in terms of housekeeping, I got to give a special and a significant and a particular and a peculiar shout out to my South African family for all the love you guys have shown this channel, my wife, myself, my children. We greatly appreciate it. Third, in terms of housekeeping, bam, 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 just like that. Bam, bam, bam. Just like that, I got to give a special and a significant and a particular and a peculiar shout out to the rest of the family, to the UK family, to the Botswana family, to the Kenya family, to our Palestinian family, to our Palestinian family, to the Texas family, the Louisiana family, the New Orleans family, because that's two separate things. We see y'all, we appreciate y'all, we thank y'all for your support, for watching this channel. I'm always amazed that people actually watch this channel. So we just be sitting up and clowning. Really, what we doing is giving y'all the insight to how we sit around and clown. All right. So, spring box. I gotta say this. Spring box. Before we get too, to, before we go another further. Another further. Spring box. I finally got to last week sit down and engage in some rugby, and I tell you, I enjoyed myself. But it wasn't a spring box game. It was the Fiji. Versus England game, and at one point, see, this is when I was I was sitting, I was kind of half paying attention. We were in Melrose Arc, and I was sitting there uh, with a hubbly and kind of paying attention to the screen. They got they had a big screen set up, yeah. kind of paying attention, but I wasn't really paying attention. But then at one point, they had piled on top of each other, and uh, one dude from Fiji smacked fire from the dude from England. Like, pow! I said, oh. What is this? This nigga do this in the game? I yeah, said, oh. He was holding on to his shirt, and yeah. I think he was trying to get him to let go of his shirt. Man, he, he smacked him. I said, oh. And the dude, uh, the, the, uh, his teammate, the English teammate guy was like, he smacked him, mate. Talking to the, uh, <laughs> talk, that was my English accent. Talking to the, uh, to the referees. He, he smacked him, mate. He smacked him. He slapped him. And I was like, oh, this is an interesting game. Let me <laughs> pay attention. So, um. So you know, I noticed in that game for the first time that there's a few flags in reference to like England and Great Britain. Like oh. the English flag was like white with the red cross. Oh. But I was like, your British flag is different. You know, it's like the anyway. I was like, oh, this is strange. This is I still don't know the difference between the UK <laughs> and Britain and Scotland and England and, and Ireland. I, I don't know. I really do. I care. <laughs> That. I really don't care. Yeah, so um, anyway, I need to learn the rules of rugby. So anybody want to volunteer uh, to teach me some of the rules of rugby, holler at me in the comments. Uh, and then another thing is I know the Springboks have a game tomorrow Sunday. I think tomorrow the 18th. I don't know. I don't know. 17 to 18, something like that. Like that. They got a game tomorrow. Where no, can I? the 20-something. We're in the 20s? The 21st? Don't matter. Tomorrow. They got a game. Yes, 22nd. Oh, the 22nd. I'm sorry. Y'all see where I'm at. <laughs> so I didn't know where I could watch the game because we don't have a TV. We don't do the TV thing. Yeah. Right. So um, where can I watch the game tomorrow? Can I stream it on my phone? That's what really what I would want to do is kind of stream it on my phone and not actually have to go out and watch it. So in the comments, somebody let me know uh, who's going to teach me the rules because I'm still not following it, following it. Right. I just got excited because they was fighting. Right. <laughs> But I need to know the rules and like, cause it's it's not like football. No, it looked like football, but it's not. First of all, they ain't got no pads on, which is outrageous. You know, you tackling people. This we used to call that throw up tackle, and when we was kids, we used to just throw the ball up and catch it and just run. And it's everybody against everybody, right? But um, but they also don't have like those like you know in American football they. Throw the ball and it's 30 mm -hmm. yards down the line. Dude does the Odell Beckham one-handed catch or whatever have you. So you don't really see that. But you do see uh, uh, some resemblance of American football. So I need to know the, the rules, regulations, and why so many people on the field. Like, it's like I think the, football, the American <laughs> football team is like, what, 10 people? Something like that. It might be eight. I don't know. But it looks like they got a whole lot of people on the on, on one team on the field. But So – Holler at me in the comments. Um, anything else we wanted to talk about? I wanted to get that out the way. So, all right.
So in the comments recently, somebody said, uh, Dr. Sai, what's going on with the real estate? And I said, well, I guess we haven't talked about our real estate in a minute. Huh? Mm -hmm. So what's going on with the real estate? So as of now, we own 12, 13, 14, 14 units and a commercial space and then one uh, coming on that's actually being built in Rosebank and that should be done in 2024. We invested in, um, um, yeah, uh, what's the name of the triangle? Uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, and they are the, they're the same company that did, um, the ellipse that's right next to the mall of Africa. So they're building something in Rosebank called one Rosebank. So we invested in that or whatever have you. So, um, you know, we've been doing this real estate thing for a little while now. We, we didn't come to South Africa on the real estate. We were doing it in the United States. Not big. Like, we wasn't like no uh, DJ Envy. <laughs> y'all saw, y'all heard DJ Envy out here with a Ponzi scheme. He out there getting this Bernie Madoff phone, man. God, dog. But uh, yeah, yeah. So we not do we wasn't doing it like that. But so man, we just started all kind of stuff. So first of all, yeah. we've been married a long time, and we've been willing to uh, risk it for a long time. Not the marriage. I'm talking about the money. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've been ready to we would been willing to risk it. So we've done all kind of stuff. I think the first business we started off with was a vending machine business. I think that was the first one. Yeah, we bought. Some vending machines. Uh, oh, we were planning. Like it came up and somebody was selling them. Or maybe we, we saw them on Craigslist. Shout yeah. out on Craigslist. We saw them on Craigslist. Bought a couple of vending machines. Yeah. I remember there used to be a TV show with D.L. Uh, D. Hughley. Hughley. Uh, whatever his name is. Uh -huh. And in the TV show, he owned vending machine businesses. Uh -huh. And I was like, oh, he owned vending machines. Okay, cool. So um, we tried that. My sister used to own a nursing school. So we have one of the uh, vending machines there. Two of, them. Two of them there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Break every day. <laughs> All he had was notes on the thing. It took 50 cents. It took 30 cents. <laughs> Let's sell these vending machines. Let's get rid of this. <laughs> get rid of this. So then we, uh, no, no, that's not the first business. The first business was the lawn care business. Oh, we right. went back and forth with that one for years because yeah. we was doing and it'd be like, ah, ah, but it always ended up being, it, it, it's always a way, uh, I don't know how it is in SA, but um, in the States, lawn care is always a way to make a good hustle, yeah. you know. And it's it, not hard to, to jump into. It's not hard to jump into. You just, you just need a lawnmower, a weed eater, uh, and some elbow grease. That's it. If you If you're willing to go out there and work, you can get you some money. Yeah. So that was the first one. We bought that little truck. And we were riding around in a truck cutting grass, right? Uh, the time we did that lady's garden. With the fleas? No, nothing. No, <laughs> I'm talking about the, on the West Bank. Oh, she had that big garden, so yeah. We had to rip everything up. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, man. That was hard. I think we man. made, what, $500? Maybe something. For, God, when you look at it for a day of work, it's not bad. You made $500 in one it was day. A, but a whole it was a lot. <laughs> Yeah, we really. like, I don't want to do this. <laughs> we was, I don't want to finish the job. I'm tired. <laughs> Man, we out there grip, yeah. So the, I'm talking about the, the lady with the fleas. We cut one lady's yard, uh, and she had dogs in her backyard. Yeah, and we get in the car, and I mean, it's you could see them jumping off. I said, "Oh God, damn! <laughs> These filthy son! I <laughs> got a dog with all this. Oh man." So after we did that, that's I think we did the vending machines. Um, then what else did we do, man? Uh, we uh, we owned a coffee shop or a yeah. tea shop. It was tea, really coffee, cool. and stuff. That was a grand opening, grand closing. Grand opening. <laughs> yeah. There were so many lessons we learned from that. One. Oh, bro, yeah, that it was, was hard to find reliable help. Man, <laughs> it was that. that was, listen, I, was, I I swore off brick and mortar. From that point on, I was like, I don't ever want a brick and mortar business again. Yeah, Not like that. It was hard to find good yeah. employees. And to check the plans, uh, the city plans for the area prior to opening the right, brick and mortar. Right, right. Because they tore the street up and blocked right. the traffic. 
like a week after we opened, so right. no one came by <laughs> anymore. But let me tell you how, how God works, is that we didn't lose out on that business. We sold it. Yeah. Just think about that. We the business we let me tell you, I ain't had no books. <laughs> I ain't had no profit and loss sheets, no cash flow statements, yeah, none, of, none of that. I was just like, we're going to be out here and we're going to slang coffee. We're going to slang tea. Uh, we're going to buy some <laughs> vegan wraps and all that old type of stuff. And yeah, I have none of that. Somebody still bought that business. And yeah. we bought so, and that's what led us into real estate. Because we bought, after we sold that business, we found, so timing is everything, y'all. Timing is everything. Post Katrina, New Orleans. So Hurricane Katrina comes through in 2005 and it destroys 80% of the city floods. And so everybody's rebuilding. Homes are cheap. You can buy a flooded and gutted for little or nothing or whatever. Flooded and gutted means the house was flooded. And then they went in and they gutted all the walls out. So all you have is just the, the outside frame of the house, the brick frame mm -hmm. or whatever have you. So flooded and gutted houses were cheap. And that means you had to go and repair or whatever. But we end up finding a duplex, a house with a, it, it was one building, but on one side of the, it was like two apartments in one building. I don't know how to explain yeah. it. And it had three bedrooms on one side and two yeah. on the other side. And we got that for $16,000. Yeah. And it only Man. needed like cosmetic work. So nothing structurally was wrong. I got some of my essays too. from uh, Lowe's <laughs> and Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, the, walls, the floors, uh, and they okay. came in and fixed it up. And man, let me tell you something. That was so much trouble with that house, man. First, it first of all, we couldn't get it insured because they were like, "Oh, we wanted to, you got to be occupied to have it insured." I'm like, "That's retarded," it you know. So then it was in the worst neighborhood in the world, right? Literally, I was walking out of the house one day, like hence when we first 16, bought, hence sixteen thousand, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it hit 60. <laughs> it was in the worst neighborhood in the world. The like, worst. literally, like, warfare going on outside. And uh, I was walking out of the house, and the police pulled up on me. And he was like, what are you doing coming out of the house? I said, oh, well, hold on, hold on. I own this. This is me. And he was like, well, they hide. They doping guns up under your house. I'm like, oh, for real? Like, one time we were doing a walkthrough, and there was this little boy like, looking through the window. Yeah. Like, oh, I want to fuck <laughs> Nah, then, so 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 okay. then the house next door is a crack house, yeah. right? Yeah. And they just set the crack house on fire, and it then <laughs> fell on my house and burned my roof. Before insurance. Before insurance, no insurance. So now I'm sitting at home. I get a phone call, and they're like, "Man, your house on fire." My house on fire. Ha! <laughs> 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 oh man, so oh man. So we sold. So then we had trouble. We had all kind of all trouble. All kind of trouble. You Listen, remember the time that they tried to play us and say there was raw sewage coming out? Yeah, <laughs> we we ran out. Looked like just some meth heads or something. You know, <laughs> that's the only people who gonna live in the neighborhood, that's the only right? One. <laughs> Either meth heads or crackheads. You're not finding no uh, academicians living there. Yeah, yeah. Ain't nobody would know. Ain't nobody who could read live in that neighborhood. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so the meth heads did that to us, and they, they jetted out on the rent. Um, there was a young couple, they were like uh, 18, 19, just graduated high school, thought they was in love, and blah, 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 blah. And I showed them the place. I said, y'all sure y'all want to live over here? <laughs> they were from New Orleans. I was like, y'all show? <laughs> what part of the city you from? <laughs> But they signed the lease, and before you know it, there was mom and daddy was calling. I was like, they're 18. That's they're, they're grown people business right. at this point. Um, and then uh, who else? We had the uh, colorful guy that lived there, Ooh. right, and never paid his rent. He never did. Remember that time he's like, okay, I'm going to pay you. Just meet me at this store. And had us meet. He drove out there, and he stood us up. <laughs> we were so green. So green. <laughs> then me trying to represent the Islam, I rented out to a Muslim brother. Cheap. I rented Cheap. a three bedroom. And let me tell you, we met him because let me tell you how life worked. So when we said we started the lawn care business, we bought the little truck from Craigslist. The dude we bought the truck from, right? His name was Sheikh. We bought the truck from Sheikh. Years later, we got this, uh, this, this house. 
and I'm riding down there. Uh, I had it for rent, I'm looking for somebody for the three bedroom, and I saw him walking. I guess he didn't get no cars in the truck, <laughs> right? I guess this was his last time rolling. I said, "Man, what's that in shape?" And he was like, man, what's going on, brother? He's, uh, he's like, I was just looking for this place. I was supposed to meet this lady. I'm trying to find me an apartment. I said, for real? And it was, he was like two blocks away from where I, uh, where, where our house was, where, you know, where, where the house was. So I said, man, I got a place for you. You know, three bedroom or whatever have you. If you already in this neighborhood, look at me. It's not like I'm taking you from up. Right, so right. Nice part right, right. Nah, nah, nah. <laughs> nah. For people from New Orleans, this was on 2nd and D. If you're from New Orleans, it's on 2nd and D, mm. right? Mm -hmm. Dryad Street, right? So, um, get him in the house. I give him a, I'm talking about a discount discount, like $500 a month on the strength that I knew him from selling me the truck. And then he was a Muslim. I was like, I'm going to take care of you, $500. He couldn't even pay that. <laughs> he used to give us partial payments. Yeah, I'm going to give you $200. Totally got a, like, $200 a month. <laughs> You yeah. never got the whole rent. So, <laughs> never. You don't never had two things that match. <laughs> don't never had two things that match, man. God, dog. So, then we sold the house. And we Ooh. sold it. Now, listen. This is second in D, New Orleans. If you know what second in D, you know. This in the hood. This all like this. This the hood, hood, hood. Like it ain't the like store right there, the bar. It's just the it's halfway just, house. Half right. The, street with the, the crazy lady, lady walking, walking up and down the street talking to herself, peeing Did outside. You the, uh, bike. Yeah, this in is the dress. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> this is like the worst area ever. <laughs> we sold it to two white boys from out of town, and. This is how God works. That's what I'm saying. You got to just kind of stay focused. You never know what's going on and how these things are going to actually work out for you. I sold it to some white boys, a white boy named Joel. I'll never forget that. Mm -hmm. And I just knew I got over on it because, you know, we sold it for way more than we pay, paid for it because at this time the, the real estate had started to recover. And we had fixed it up. And we had fixed it up. So we had, I sold it for way more. And I was like, ooh, I got over on Got over on him. Lame duck. So about six months later, I run into Joel, and uh, um, I was somewhere uptown. I ran into Joel, and I was almost embarrassed to, to, to talk to him because I was like, I know he having all kind of trouble I he, he, like, with that little house, man. I know it's true, man. Psh, I got over on. I I kind of feel bad. So I was like, man, Joel, what's going on, brother? How's everything? He's like, good, good, good. I said, how's the house? Man, it's great, man. We're doing Airbnb, uh, renting it out for ninety nine dollars a night. What? First of all, what is Airbnb? This is how I didn't even know what Airbnb was, right? And so he had to explain that to me. And secondly, I was like, you allowing people to go in from out of town <laughs> to stay there? They stay there? Wow. Because when we rolled up, wouldn't even get out the car. Yeah, yeah. Mm -mm. <laughs> he was like, I've seen enough. <laughs> no, no, let's keep going. We don't need to go inside. <laughs> Y'all know my people bougie bougie. Mm -mm, mm -mm. They was like, he was like, no, no, this is. I mean, just pulling into coming in. It's like Hillbrow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's true. No, and I'm not. Yeah, you know, I'm not exactly. It's, it's like Hillbrow. It's like buying an apartment in Hillbrow. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. So he told me about Airbnb. So I came home and told Adrian. She already knew what it was. She must, you know, she y'all know she's a little smaller than me. So I was like, man, what is Airbnb? So that's how we got into the Airbnb business because he told us about Airbnb and eventually what we did was we built a um, guest house in the back of our house. Now only in New Orleans can you get away with some stuff like that, right? Uh, we ain't had no permit. <laughs> We told the dude. We told him we was building the garage. Because we knew if we wanted to say like a guest house, they were going to charge us going to triple, quadruple. It's like, just build us a nice big garage we can store some. My, my, so we had gone back. So what happened was, once we sold the house to Joel and then we went, I went back to lawn care. Lawn, I told you, it always makes some money. So at this time, I had big old zero turns. I know y'all, it's, it's a, a zero turn. It's the riding lawnmower that has the the uh, levers like this, and you push it forward, do this, go back. And those are pretty expensive. So I had a couple of those and all this lawn equipment. 
And we had a long driveway, and I used to just park it in my driveway. Um, you know, at night, no one was going to steal it or whatever have you. So uh, I told the guy, I was like, man, look, I just need a garage to park my stuff. So he built the frame for us for like, I don't know. It was cheap. I don't know, like, I don't want to say a couple hundred. Yeah, it was very cheap. So we did that. And <laughs> um, and then eventually, we, you know, we started with, because, you know, we put the floors in there. I tried to frame yeah, the bathroom like different off. people we got to do different yeah. things. That's you learn to do contractors like that. If you give them the whole job, you're mm. paying so much. You're right. Like, eh, just do this. Right. <laughs> so, so we were like, just Little piecemeal. Yeah. And before you know, we had an Airbnb property. Uh, a guest house, right? And when I tell you we were, we stayed at 85, sometimes 90% occupancy for mm -hmm. three some odd years, even through COVID. Yeah. When I tell you it made us a significant amount of money because New Orleans is a tourist town. Right. There, every day of the week, every day of the year, I should say, there is something, something going on. on, right? A festival, a music concert, a conference, something like that. So it was always tourists in town. Mm -hmm. And we had great reviews. I think we still got great reviews. Like we 4.9 rating right now, um, which we which benefits us because when the new Rosebank property opens, we still have the same Airbnb account. Um, and so we're still super hosts, mm -hmm. right? We're still super hosts. So uh, when the Airbnb property opens in Rosebank, then boom, we're back on the Airbnb thing. So we went through all that. And if it wasn't for this happening, that happening, this happening, that happening, we wouldn't have been in a position. Uh, so that was kind of our introduction to real estate, like the duplex and then Airbnb wasn't technically real estate, but it was mm -hmm. accommodations. It was a great setup, though. Because yeah. in a home you already live in. Yeah. And... It, so it's not costing you that much it didn't extra. Cost us I don't anything. have to go and get a mortgage for a separate place. No. And, and cover the mortgage first before it was just profit. It was all profit. It was all profit. That's the way I like it. Mm, mm, that's good mm. stuff. Bam, bam, bam. Give me all some of that profit. profit. Give me some of that profit. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, uh, I mean, that enabled us to come over here and buy real estate and do like, you know, rental properties. And we started off with one impulsive. Right, that's um, over here, I guess, in the four ways area. And like I said, uh, some of these properties we have just really set it and forget it. Mm -hmm. You just collect money. Others, you know, you got to kind of put a little time in. And yeah. uh, we had to upgrade our water system and, uh, or at least our water meters because uh, they have in one of the properties, they have a communal space. Right, mm -hmm. a communal water, like communal showers and communal bathrooms, or whatever have you. And coming from the U.S., we don't have nothing like that. That's like a dormitory or prison. That's the only place you gonna find it. <laughs> dorms and prisons. Dorms and prisons. That's the only way place you gonna find like communal. And dorms are on college campuses, so you right. pay tuition for that. Right. <laughs> and prison, well, <laughs> it is what it is. You know what I'm saying? So um, so we had to learn that little game or whatever have you, like, okay, we need to monitor this, this is, this, is, this is how that works, or whatever have you. But it looks like things are doing pretty well uh, mm -hmm. as of late. As of late, we kind of, you know, no matter what business it, it, it is that you're getting, you're always going to have to invest into it, right? right. Um, the beautiful thing I think about, like, real estate is that um, – you don't necessarily, if you have 40,000 USD and you buy a piece of property, right? You didn't really lose, you didn't lose 40,000 USD. Mm. You went from a liquid asset to a fixed asset or uh, a real estate, real estate. So um, you can collect money off that, rent money for a couple of years. And like I said, you can sell it for the exact same price, the exact same price. And still come out profitable. Why? Because mm -hmm. for three years you collected rent. Four years in you collected rent. In the U.S., you, you, you know, you can borrow off of it. And you can borrow, yeah. You can leverage that property. You can't do here that here. It's not the Yeah, same. That's, that's, that's weird. That was hurtful. Yeah, because hurtful. when you own hurtful. something flat out in the U.S., they'll let you loan. Because, you know, the banks want to keep you in debt. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Snatch that property up and sell it. And sell it because <laughs> they got a, they, it's called a secured loan. Right. They know that. Okay, you got a piece of property that's worth a hundred thousand dollars. For sure, I loan you eighty thousand dollars because I know if you don't pay it, I'm gonna go get this hundred thousand dollar property and be twenty thousand dollars up. 
You know what I'm saying? So, um, but yeah, I don't think they do that. If they do it in that say, let me know. If, if y'all know how to We've do it in that say, banks, though, yeah, yeah. Well, we were told if you have a bond. And do whatever it. you yeah. pay down on that bond, you might get a percentage As of that that you pay. Equity call. loan, yeah. Yeah, but they don't do the like secured loans like on something you don't owe on, you just yeah. flat out. So yeah. I, like, I, don't I don't know why, because it, it seems like it's just it's the same risk. I mean, you could just come snatch the property. Right. But anyway, um all I could say it is it seems like somebody would work harder not to lose the thing that they fully own. Own, prop, own right you out, flat out. Right. But, anyway. but all I could say is to people, man, listen. Yeah. Um, keep pushing. Motivational's time. Keep pushing, man. We've been through all kind of businesses. Fail. Oh, grand opening, grand closing. Grand closing. Grand opening, grand closing. And, um, you know, stuff worked out. Stuff didn't work out. But a lot of the lessons that we learned, we were able to now make applicable to where we are now. And I guess in 15 years, the lessons that we're learning now, we'll be able to make applicable 15 years from now. So keep pushing. Uh, if you're interested in, in, in doing a business, you know, uh, don't be like me. Get a business plan. <laughs> I ain't never had a business plan. I don't even know how to write a business plan. <laughs> yeah, I don't know you nothing about that. You AI now, it'll help you. Yeah, you got Chad GPT. <laughs> Tell Chad GPT to write you a business plan or something, man. Um, and, and, you know, uh, I don't know. We... we I don't know what to tell people about financing for businesses or whatever have you. We always held jobs and used our money, our own money, to try to figure out what we were going to do. And we were fortunate because we were able to take something that we bought $16,000 for it and flip it into something else. Like I said, it was the experience of owning that property was horrible, but at the end, we still ended up being profitable to be able to sell it and then to get ourselves into different situations. So, um, yeah, keep pushing. You know, uh, stay prayed up. And I guess, you know, whatever you're trying to do, you know, I wish you the best of luck. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. I take think, some risk. Live your life. Especially when you're young. You don't want to take a risk at 50. I don't know. Maybe you do. Maybe you do. You know, like whatever kind of risk you want to take. But when you're young, you got a little bit more time to bounce back from yeah, that risk. to recover. Yeah, yeah. You might Especially take that risk. young, young. 18, 19, 19 yeah. Kind of time to right. Ain't got no uh, children. <laughs> right. But let me tell you something. I'm about to say you ain't got no wife, ain't got no kids. But let me tell you, the best thing to have is a partner. Yeah. See, I don't go out seeking like I need a business partner. That's my business partner. Right. You know? And if, if look, it'd be hard to divorce us. We got to break up businesses and everything. We just <laughs> got to stay together. <laughs> like Will and Jada. Will and Jada. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to go less separate from you. We'll talk later. <laughs> Addy! Boy! Ooh. Will and Jada. No, we ain't got no Will and Jada type of love. No, no, no. We, don't, we do not want to wish that wish that on us at all. Mm -mm. I don't know. I don't want no Will and Jada type of love. I don't want no Beyonce and Jay-Z type of love. I think people are too caught up in celebrity yeah. and and and... Y'all know all that's curated images that y'all right, see? Right. All of that is planned. All of that is just curated. Like if you can look at your best friend's uh, Instagram and be like, girl, you is. Right. Why are you fronting? Why are you lying? You, think they not you know your partner that posted. <laughs> he done posted a bottle at the club with fake jewelry on and everybody, and everybody liking it, think he bought. Now, you know if he could fake it. <laughs> right. Huh? For real. So y'all really be watching the people? He faked it with, with uh, 30 followers. Right, right, with 30 <laughs> followers and 30 rand in his pocket. He worked all of, he worked, his net worth is 32 rand and 50 cent. And he faking it with Gucci on. You don't think these celebrities be fake? Y'all really be watching these people caring about. I laugh because I think all of this stuff is funny. That I think both the celebrities are funny and the people who believe the Ooh. stuff the celebrities are doing is funny. It's like hard and strong. I mean, they be going, I want a Jay-Z and Beyonce type of love. You don't know them people? You really don't. <laughs> you ever met them people? You don't know them. You don't know what's going on. Yeah, I'm not saying he is, but Jay could be batting, batting her every night. Pow, shut up, B. You don't know, right? You don't know what's going on in them people relationship. All you see is a perfectly curated image for you to want to look up to. Look, look up to your momo and your papa in their relationship, right? Your go-go, what do they call grandfathers? Go-go. I don't know. All right, we call them papas. So your go-go's and your papas, 
right? They've been together 50 years and they still seem happy and comfortable with each other. And she fixing them breakfast and he going outside washing her car. That's what you need to look up to. Stop looking up to them people in, 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 in Hollywood. I don't know how we got here. But stop looking up to them people in Hollywood. Please. Uh, I, I hate people looking up to, to celebrities and the rappers. You know, you got grown people. Lord, I'm on my soapbox now. You got grown people, right? I remember when Rihanna came out and she cut her hair. And Rihanna was younger than, you know, like she was like in her 20s. And yeah. you had grown women, 35 years old, go and get Rihanna cut. You special kind of stupid. <laughs> you a special kind of stupid following behind a child. That's the problem. We the adults. We the elders. We're supposed to be the leaders. And you following behind a child, Trent? You special kind of stupid. And you got grown men listening to their new rap. So I, 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 I see it all the time. They following the trends behind the children. Instead of being the leaders, and that's because they put these celebrities and these these stars in front of us, and that's how easy it is to control us. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's how easy it is to control us. And some some of y'all went to school with a celebrity. Y'all know they was lightweight, retarded when they was in school. You know that they wasn't that bright. <laughs> Money. Let me tell you something. Money and fame does not make you intelligent. Let me repeat that. Money and fame does not make you intelligent. Does not make you moral, does not make you good, does not make you better than anybody. Sexy Red is famous. Sexy Red famous. You gonna take any type of advice from Sexy Red about anything? <laughs> Some of y'all would. would. Just cause she's famous. Anyway, man, let me get off my soapbox. Y'all have a good one.